Hey Ruth, how are you? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, how was your day? Um, my day was so... A little tiring. So heavy. <laughs> ah, yes. Many activities today. Yes. Okay. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hey, good evening, Eric. Good evening. How was your day? Uh, just uh, doing great. I'm home, resting and waiting for the English class hey. at 8 o'clock, sir. That's great. Okay. It's a good time to have a, a opportunity to practice speaking a little bit of English and seeing what's going on and things like that. Yes. Do you get a chance to speak English at your job? Do you have an opportunity to speak to other people in English? Well, in my case, I had that opportunity. Sometimes uh, we agree with some of our partners to try to speak all day in English. I mean, all the conversation that we we have, uh, try to do it in English, and uh, some of them agree and some others don't. Okay. Good and evening. Why do you think, good evening. Why do you think some people don't agree? Mm -hmm. Uh, because I guess that that is the the main uh, things that people because but that people don't improve English because we feel like uh, like shame or we feel embarrassed that some other people listen to us. But I I say to them if if we don't try to speak English we never be we never improve our language. So no matter that we make mistakes, but that is the way to learn. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think it's it's the it's the best way. I I try to learn many languages, and I usually practice them, um, making mistakes and just trying, and sometimes having fun with it. And you know, I I noticed, but it's very, I think it's very cultural that um, for at least in my experience, many Salvadorians they make fun of others when they make a mistake, and it feels good. I don't know. Yeah, we maybe, do that. I know maybe Maria, because she's been a teacher, she has an experience as well, that I've had students, they get 60s or 50 in the class or in a grade, but the partner or their friends get 40 and they feel good. And they say, oh, I got more than you. Yeah, but you got a 60. But <laughs> no, but it's okay. He's better than him. But mm -hmm. it's, but so th this mentality that it's, it's not, it's okay to be bad. It's okay not to, not to do well. This is very, it's acceptable in many cases or, oh, you do bad, but I make you, I feel good because you are worse. Or this is the, the way that many people look at it. Ah, I feel better because you are doing badly and I am doing better than you. But, yes. but in reality, the two are doing bad, but you feel good because the other person is doing, uh, is not as good as you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. It's true. And, and sometimes even the one who has the worst results is bragging on himself or herself for having that grade and making it on themselves. That, that is sad. Mm -hmm. But it happens so often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I congratulate you, Eric, on the mentality. It's not easy. It's not easy to have the mentality and say, I'm going to try. It doesn't matter. I'm going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And it's okay because we're people, right? Nobody likes to be criticized. Nobody likes to be corrected. And we all, many people, we all are conscious and we're just, you know, we, we wish we could do everything perfect and we wish that we could do yeah. it the first time correctly. But it's not a reality. It's not true. It's, it needs practice. Everything that in order for you to be perfect or to do really well, you need to practice and practice and practice. Yes. All right. So we're going to start off by practicing a little bit. It's not going to be long. People, more people are going to connect soon. Uh, it always happens. We're just going to take a moment and what we would normally do, talk about your day. What happened? What went on? Um, whatever you want to share with your partners. Okay. So let's take a few moments. Um, like I said, it's not going to be a long activity. It's just to help us talking about and getting started for today's topic. Today's topic in unit three is what happened in order to get a good idea is we need to feel natural. Now, if you feel naturally talking about your day, great. If you don't feel naturally talking about your day, your partner can ask you. I can say, for example, Marcela, where did you go today? Uh, Gladys, what did you eat for breakfast? Ruth, what time did you wake up? Eric, uh, who did you see today? Uh, Maria, uh, did you see your son or your grandson, right? Heidi, uh, are you, you know, whatever you want. But all of these different questions you can ask or if you are a talkative person, you can tell your partner. If you are telling, remember, that, or if you are answering the question, remember that you use past tense. Past tense is the verb that you normally use. If it's negative, you use didn't and then the verb in the present. Okay, so I didn't have lunch, for example, okay, or I didn't go out. If it's a question, it's only did, okay? You can ask what, where, when, the WH, but the auxiliary that you normally use is did. Okay, are we ready to make a few uh, questions and uh, statements with our partners? Yes. Okay. All right, great. Get ready. Perfect. Like I said, it's only, uh, it's not something big, just to get us warmed up. Hey, Karen, I'm going to send you to a group. There you go. Hey, medium. Hi, I sent you to a group with to a group with Heidi and Maria. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Patricia, how are you? Patricia, how was your day? Uh, hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's very, uh, it's, uh, it was hard. Oh, really? For the work, uh -huh, for the end of the month, uh, the job is, is, is more. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm going to send you to a group. I'm going to send you with Eric and Gladys, okay? Okay. How? Okay. How can I do? You should have an invitation. Do you have an invitation? Okay. Okay. Yes. Ah, okay. Perfect. Hey, Morena. How are you? Hi, teacher. 
How was your day? Today. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. How was your day today? Mm, really hard because it's the, the last day of the month and it's really hard. What do you do, Morena? I, I, I am working in a, in a warehouse. And, and I and I have to uh, actualizar. How do you say? Update. Update the 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 inventory and the system. All right. I'm gonna send you to a group with um, Karen, Marcela, and Ruth. It's okay. Okay. I resolved the dating. It's as a matter of fact, I wake up, uh, I guess it was seven o'clock or eight o'clock in the morning. Then I took my breakfast. Then I go to bed again. <laughs> and then I went to the downtown for a while just to, just to do some runs. And I came back to the house and in, at, after the, after after the the lunch, I oh, I oh, I take a, a nap again, and then I get started ready for the English class. So my day was was a lazy day. Yes, yes, it's a great day today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, as a matter of fact, I w it was raining today in the afternoon, so the day was the, the weather was nice. Yes. I live in Cincinnati, and Cincinnati is really hot. But because of the weather, because of the rain, it was nice. So I said to myself, "Using the reason why, using the reason why. the reason why, or the reason that that." Uh -huh. Okay. I'm sorry, teacher. Format. I don't know what we are doing. Don't I'm worry, Miriam. Don't worry. Maria and Heidi are really good and they'll help you. They'll, they'll help you. <laughs> Thank you. They're trying. <laughs> I, 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 I don't get it yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So? He said, teacher said today that the one who were wearing clothes with red stripes will leave the situation and the examples and the things. He said that. <laughs> oh my God. What am I going to do? <laughs> to, to do many things outside. I went to the supermarket. I went to the far, to the drugstore. And, uh, and then came back at home and and had to finish some reports. That's many things. Aha, uh -huh, many things. Yeah. Where's the next? <laughs> I think more of it. She has like <laughs> her um, face. Actually, I connect really late today <laughs> and I am today. but now it, change, it has changed you came to the capital for war yeah yes wow, since you had... 19, 1988 until now wow wow <laughs> you're yeah. already yeah, but... to, to travel a lot yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah as a matter of fact I love to travel because I don't know why, but my mind, I feel that my, 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 my mind rests when I'm traveling. You're traveling on bus. Yes, I feel the same. Some people get frustrated when they're on bus, but if I'm, I find a seat, then I can sleep the, the whole yes. way. Yeah, yeah, I guess the, the issue with the traveling is when the, those buses are crowded. So yeah. you can find a seat. So you have to stay. St you have to be stand up all the way along to your destination. So th those are the the issues that you can uh, 
face when you travel. Yes, but did you but type for the rest, them? It's very well. Nermina, yes, it, it's you always find a seat. Yes, I don't know. Yes, I I, I don't know now. This nowadays, I guess people uh, uh, get in, into a aisle uh, in order to take the bus because in my days. We were, if we want to take a seat, all the people run into the door of the bus. Because I really ate quickly for to connect the class. <laughs> I'm sorry, was there a question? Mm, we have a question about a word. Uh, yeah. uh, she was telling us that he made liquidaciones. And I I look at I looked at Google Translate and said liquidations, but I'm not sure about it because it sounds weird. It is weird. Um, liquidaciones of what? About facturas. Ah, that would mm, that would be a little bit different, I think. Um, I'm not sure because liquidaciones is maybe a different term. Um, can you explain me what it is that you do? Um, is it uh, like you are removing all of them? You are finishing them? Is that what you mean? Um, in Spanish. Um, Go ahead. Tell me the sentence in Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, cuadrar facturas para entregarlas al departamento de contabilidad. Okay. So that's, that's just booking. Um, so what you're doing is you're... Uh, Balancing, uh, what is it, uh, invoices? Or you're verifying invoices? Yes, I think invoices. Um, Facturas are invoices. Mm -hmm. Okay, but only a register, a register in, the, in a specific format in, in Excel. Mm -hmm. uh, the accounting department give us okay yeah because normally you have for example uh, in this case you are like balancing um they always mm -hmm. use the word the balancing invoices to you know make sure that the income matches the or the product uh matches the what it's on on the invoice the outgoing so that way when they do inventory they it, uh, it matches up like two or three or, you know, $20 for each one, things like this. Mm -hmm. um, liquidation is a little bit different. It's usually to remove. Um, that's why it's because we use liquidacion quite often um, in Spanish, but it has so many meanings that you don't even realize it. Like, um, like when you go to Simán and it's in liquidacion, it's not... Mm. You see, that's that's why it's very, I, I, it's very confusing because it really depends. Like in Spanish, we understand it, but we use it with different meanings depending mm -hmm. on the context. Mm -hmm. uh, teacher, okay, and, and recorte de personal is usually um, a reduction in, in uh, employees or reduction in personnel. Um, also, a very common word that they use is called downsizing. So, if you have been downsized this is the verb if you had been downsized that means that not that you are bad but the company is not doing well or there is not enough uh, positions or whatever and you have to be let go and so we can say the companies are doing downsize down uh, the, almost almost correct um the companies are downsizing because it's a verb, right? So the same when they have more people, the companies are hiring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So hiring is the antonym of downsizing. So you can have downsizing and downsizing is not exactly the same, but it's similar to firing. The reason that it's not the same is because downsizing has legal uh, legal protection for example when you are downsized and the company begins working again you have your job again 
or you have your, like in the case of a pandemic or in the case of a, a earthquake. For example, in El Salvador, if there's an earthquake, maybe you are downsized for a month or for, for the seasonal work. That there's some months that are high, others that are low, so you are, sometimes you are hired. But downsizing means that you don't have currently a job, but it's not because you were a bad employee. In the other countries, it's because you have, um, you receive benefits when you're not working. And mm -hmm. if, and those benefits, um, for example, if you are downsized, you get 100% of them because you lost your job, but not because you did something illegal or something that was incorrect. Mm -hmm. And usually when you're fired, yes, it's because something happened, right? Like uh, Low profile as uh -huh. the as the um, boss used to to tell people yeah. you you have low profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but that's the idea. Downsizing, hiring. So, Morena, you you were saying liquidation. What happened? Um, I forget. <laughs> Ay, Morena. Okay, don't worry. We're going to go back. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> Did you remember? No, it's okay. Don't worry. You're on mute, but I see your mouth moving, but it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. I know you were trying to answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're good. We're, we're coming up with it. We're trying to get it. The idea or the oral practice at the beginning is to help you with your fluency, to help you feel more confident and comfortable talking about everyday conversations, which is the main topic or main conversations that you have with people when you first meet them, right? You talk about your day, you talk about what happened or, you know, the situations or things at work, you know, that's depending on where you meet them, usually at the office or at work. Those are the topics that you talk about. Today, we're going to be taking a look at um, our 3.1. We're going to be starting on our platform on 3.1 on the conversation of what happened. Um, before we begin this, are there any questions or any comments um, about the platform? Anything that you have a problem with, with some exercise or something? No, at the moment, no. no. I, I, I haven't done the, the unit two, just finished the, the unit one. Okay, all right. Well, try to work on unit two over the weekend because we are already in unit three and then it's going to accumulate and then you're going to feel a lot of pressure later to try to get yeah. an 80 and finish and get everything done. But don't worry about it. We just as long as you're persistent a little bit every day a little bit every day that's the best way to finish mm -hmm. okay. i have a question yes about, about the discussions do they count for the 80 percent or for uh, something they do count they they don't they don't count for the 80 percent but they count for uh the completion of your work because you need to complete all of the tasks and if not then at the end it, it comes up like a little red line and says uh, not uh, even if you have the grade is not possible it is going to say something like not possible to give you a diploma or it's uh, incomplete activities or something like this so the same for the videos that you because at the end you always have to make sure that everything is checked that everything is checked with green that it has been completed or checked or read mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, well, uh, in my case, Eric, yep. I just finished the uh, unit number two, but I remember that yesterday you were talking something with Maria Isabel about the, the answers. So you said that, that grammatically, many, many of the, the answers can be correct, but probably because of the platform, it's just said for one of them. 
especially. Ah, uh, yes. My case, I saw that it's, it's uh, repetitive, some of them, because, because of, because of, and something like that. And four, and four, was, I think that was the one that we four. discussed with specifically with Maria. Um, I think it was exercise number two, if I remember, from and the- five. And five, two and five from the, from the 2.9. And, mm -hmm. and it was because the, uh, the platform didn't include the word four. Um, okay. Uh, four is also correct, but uh, and Maria had put it, and that's why I said that grammatically her answer is correct because you can use four, okay? But okay. in in the case of the platform, it didn't allow that as an answer. And okay. and that has been always my concern, even the last model, because how will we know in the midterm or in the final exam? Because if we know that grammatically is correct. How will we know that they are thinking in something else? Um, you you won't. Every time, every with each group, always the, they are trying to improve it. So, for example, I already sent Jonathan the uh, the corrections, the report, so that there uh, he can fix the errors um, that we have. There was an error in um, number seven and two point two. Um, there was for the other group or 2.9. So I, I always keep sending him the, the little mistakes so that he can realize, oh, okay, we forgot. Sometimes it's, maybe it's not a mistake. It's just they forgot to add another option or another possibility that was correct. Mm -hmm. So don't worry if, okay. if it does happen on the exam, um, the same thing, we make the corrections and then uh, I help you out and then we'll be able to redo it and make sure that it's, it's done correctly and you get the appropriate grade. It's not that you'll lose the grade. Mm -hmm. If that happens in the exam, will you let Morena help me again? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Have Morena explain it. Okay. Morena, I, I will no. keep an eye on you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, here, let me share my screen with you. Um, we're taking a look at today's topic, um, as I mentioned, is in the platform or in the WhatsApp group wherever you like, it's the 3.1, okay? Um, the reason we skip the three, the others, is because it's just an introduction and it's just the objective. The, the main objective of this unit is just being able to make predictions, describe it. So you can say attention to the past models, okay? So we're gonna be uh, talking about offering explanations. So like, um, why something happened or the reason for something or this is the idea for explain any situation. As you can see here, we have a conversation. Um, we're going to listen to it first and if there are any words that are not clear um, for pronunciation or what they mean, then you ask me at when we're finished done or when we're done listening to it. Okay, you guys ready? Yes. You asked Beth to be here around 7 o'clock, didn't you? Yes. What time is it now? It's almost 8. I wonder what happened. Hmm. She might have forgotten the time. Why don't I call and see if she's on her way? I got her voicemail, so she must not have turned on her cell phone. I hope she didn't have a problem on the road. Her car could have broken down or something. Of course, she may have simply forgotten and done something else today. No, she couldn't have forgotten. I just talked to her about it yesterday. I guess we should start without her. Okay. There you go. So, we have several things that are happening in this conversation. Our grammatical or vocabulary objective is to look at models. And models give us an explanation of what happened. Um, they give us an opinion. Do you know or can you identify any models in this conversation? Might. 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 Mm -hmm. mm, must. Must. Mm -hmm. May. Could. May. Couldn't. Couldn't. Oh. Could. Should. Uh -huh. Should. Should. Exactly. Should. Okay. Uh, 
I think you guys said them all, but that's great. It's great that you remember what are modals. And modals are uh, a little bit more difficult because they change according to the context, right? In this case, and we're looking at the modals of things in the past. So we're using all of these like um, she could have, or she might have, or she may have, or she should have. Now, what's the idea? The key here to put them into the past tense is the word have. When you have it with the word have, it means the past tense. If you use only the model without have, then it's for the idea for the present, okay? So I could go to the movies, but if I use have, I could have gone to the movies. Now it's talking about something that I did in the past. All of these are models that we're looking at, okay? And they have a different degree, like might, it's like a little bit, it's like a maybe, but less, okay? Could, we're using it for options. That means it's a possibility. Uh, do you have the possibility or you have the option to do one thing or another? That's good. Uh, must is when you are certain that this is the answer or you are certain that this happened. That's must. Should is a recommendation. It's what your personal opinion, what you think is the correct way. Okay, so we have might, like maybe, could, like possibilities, must, like obligation, and should for opinions. Are those okay right now? Yes. Okay, what about the words in the conversation? Are there any words that you don't know um, for pronunciation or for meaning? Um, can you say the word for forgotten? That's that's correctly pronounced forgotten. Okay, thank you. Forgotten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have a few questions about this conversation. Let's take a look. I just talked to her about it yesterday. I guess we should start without her. What time? Okay. So we have a few questions. According to what you remember, what time was Beth asked to come? What time was she supposed to be there? Seven o'clock in the morning. At seven. At seven, okay. And in the conversation, what time is it? Eight. Eight, eight o'clock. It's eight o'clock, so it's already one hour, yeah. And the guy, Will, what does Will decide to do? To call her. To call her. Okay. Yeah, he decides to call her. And why can't Will contact her? The cell phone is turned off. The voicemail. Yeah, it, it, well, it, when, both answers are right, right? It's turned off or it goes directly to voicemail. Mm -hmm. And what do they decide to do? They decide Waiting. Start <laughs> yeah, they're going to start without her. They decided to start without her. Okay, great. Now, the next part is we're going to listen to the rest of the conversation and we're going to find out what really happened. Okay. After answering all of those questions, now listen to the rest of the conversation and find out what happened to Beth. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What happened? Oh, here comes Beth now. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I had an emergency. Oh, nothing serious, I hope. Well, kind of. It was Sally. Sally? Your dog? What happened? Well, I was just about to leave when she started acting strange. Then she just passed out. Oh my gosh. I panicked. I thought she had died at first. I had to rush her to the emergency clinic. But is she okay? Oh, I hope she's all right. Yeah, she's going to be fine. The vet said it was some kind of virus, so he gave her an injection, and I had to leave her with him. I'll go by later and pick her up. Oh, but guess what? What? She's going to have puppies. Congratulations. You're going to be a grandmother. <laughs> very funny, Bill. Yeah, Bill. Very funny. Hmm. Okay. Okay.
So now that we remember that, um, what happened to her? Okay, why wasn't she on time? Why couldn't she? Uh, why couldn't they contact her? I don't her that. Go ahead, Maria. Because of she has an emergency with her dog. Okay, she had an emergency with her dog. What was the emergency? She was going to have puppies. That's right. She was going to have puppies. Okay, good. And how did she, is, was she going to have puppies in that moment? No, the dog just passed out. Okay, that's right. The dog passed out. Like, passed out is fall asleep, right? Um, fainted. Synonym of fainted. The dog mm -hmm. passed out. Mm -hmm. And where did she take the dog? To the vet the clinic. To the vet. Yeah, yes. yeah. Vet to the vet. Clinic. Yeah. And she took her to the hospital, the vet hospital. That's right. So as we can see, we have all of those models, okay? And they express a certain type of degree, which is what we discussed. Some of them uh, express a possibility. Okay, some of them uh, express uh, certainty that you're positive. Some of them express opinions. Okay, let's take a look here. One moment. Okay, we're going to look at uh, what they have, uh, the different models and what they represent, and then we're going to practice using them. I want to study past models for degrees of certainty. Stay and find out what this is about. Past modals for degrees of certainty. It's almost certain. She must have left already. She must not have turned on her cell phone. It's not possible. She couldn't have been at home. It's possible. She may have forgotten the time. She might have forgotten the time. She may not have remembered the time. She might not have remembered the time. Her car could have broken down. Past models for certainty. We may use must or couldn't have. We use must or must not have when we are almost certain. We may also use couldn't have if it's not possible. Past models of possibility. We may use may, might, or could have. So remember, we may use may, might, and could when something is possible, but we don't know for sure. When you want to use may, might, or could have, this is what you should follow. Subject plus may or might or could plus have plus past participle. She may have gotten lost. I will present two situations. We want you to come up with the best explanation. Number one, your best friend is in a terrible mood today. Number two, your brother or sister is short of money again. Okay, so we have the different situations that they said at the end. If most important is that we're clear of what are the ones that we use for obligations, okay? So we use for obligations is must have or couldn't have. Those are the things that we have. If you are 100% that it happened, must have. If you are 100% that it didn't have, it's couldn't have. Okay? Then we use the other ones for possibilities. May, might. Okay, and the recommendations are should. Now, when do we use these models? We use them when we're expressing our opinions or when we're coming up with hypothetical situations, ideas of what could happen, okay? So for example, uh, Ernesto's not in class today, okay? And why, what happened to Ernesto? Ah, he might have had uh, technical problems. He could have, uh, finish work late, okay? Or, uh, but God knows, God knows she saw him in Facebook and Instagram. Ah, no, he must have, you know, he must have been partying. 
whatever it is, but each of them are grammatically correct. The difference is what certainty do you have? 100%, 80%, 50% or zero that it happened. That's the difference for those different ones. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. 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 Okay, we yeah. need to practice them. I think more than anything, we need to practice. So how do we practice this? Well, it's really easy in the case that there's a situation and you give your opinion, okay? So you're, at, at this time, your mom is not home. What happened? Okay, or uh, you can't find your keys. What happened? Okay, the TV is not working. What happened? It's just situations. It's uh, it could have, should have, they must have. So imagine Eric didn't pay the telephone for three months. What happened? Which model would you use? Eric didn't pay the telephone for three months. He must got short of money. Okay, good. Only you forgot half. He must have, ah, uh, he must have got it. No. Gotten, yes, yes gotten. Gotten short of money. Exactly. That is the key. What Marcela said the second time. All the models you can use, must, might, could, whatever. But the key to refer to the past is have and the past participle. Teacher, I yes, have a medium. question. Yes, medium. Uh, what's, what's the difference between may and might? Just what formalities. Okay. Mm -hmm. May and might. Yes. For example? Uh, may is normally a little bit more formal and might is uh, a more common form. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so like you, we're gonna take a moment and describe all different situations. What are we going to do after the pandemic? Uh, how are we going to celebrate Christmas? Uh, what are we going to do this weekend? Oh, that's when we use it. Oh, I might go to the beach. I may start the movies. I, I must find uh, or I must visit my mom. It's an obligation, okay? Or, you know, or if you give your opinion to your partner, you should visit her or you should call her every day. It's okay? Yeah, it's okay. All right, so one more time so that it's clear. We are going to go to the groups and in the groups, we're gonna practice giving opinions for different situations. How do we get the situations? Our partner, our partner gives us a situation, for example, if Ruth and Heidi are partners, Ruth tells Heidi, boom, the situation. If Karen and Miriam are partners, then Miriam tells Karen the situation. And then we just share what is the opinion. Your partner that is listening, please listen that they are using have and the past participle. This is the most important. The first part is your opinion. Could have, might have, may have, should have, must have. That's your opinion. But to put your opinion correctly structured, it's necessary have and the past participle. Okay. Okay, great. Let's make groups of three. Okay. Um, maybe um let me see. Um, teacher are it's like uh any any situation? 
I think he said yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, for example, I could say, Sorry. my sister hasn't called me in three days. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or my car won't start. Or the many times the bus isn't the the bus hasn't come. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And um, it, because all of them have to do what the function their function is is to express opinions, and it's only the difference is how is your level of certainty. Your opinion is 100%, so-so, 80, you think, but you're not sure, or you are positive this doesn't happen. Okay. Okay. So just try off with small situations and then work up little by little, just little situations. The TV won't turn on. My refrigerator doesn't function. Just little things, and then you'll see how easy it is to come up with the opinions. Okay. Okay. So... Uh, to be able, I ab able to conversation. For example. For example, uh, for example, the situation could be: Why are we taking uh, this class? Yes, the situation. Yes. Uh, um, for example, in my, I should, I should have. Uh, I should have taken English classes when I was young. Yeah. Um, I must have been working all last Saturday. That's why I couldn't stay at home. Okay. Let's see. Um, yo, me, me, yo. Uh, ooh, no, for Italia, Italia's other Gladys, Italia, right? Uh, what are you going to do when the quarantine is over? Sorry, didn't hear you clearly. What are you going to do when the quarantine is over? Uh, I might... Uh, All right, Gladys, uh, let, me, <laughs> let me interrupt you. Go ahead. It's okay, Gladys. Just one moment. Okay, you are correct. You can use I might. But in these situations, you don't use have. Remember, have is only for past possibilities of things that could have, might have, or should have happened in the past. The models are correct. You can continue to use them because they express this, but you are not going to use have, okay? So in the case of Miriam's question, you are going to continue, but no have. I might go to the beach. I might visit my parents. I might, whatever you want but only use have in the past participle when the action is for the past. But the model you can use in all of the situations. So I might prefer journey. Okay. Oh, okay, so that, that. So we are going to try. All right, tell me, what's the question? Could you please help us to understand the topic? Of course, Elia. To be honest, uh, both Ernesto and me joined a little bit late to the class, in my case, because I had another class uh, with the university. Okay. So I heard the explanation, but I, I'm not really sure if I understand what we are going to do. Okay, perfect. Um, you're going to give each other different situations. For example, um, at a party or last week or my mom didn't answer the phone, any situation. We can start off with uh, an easy one, okay? The TV, um, the TV didn't turn on, okay? So I'm trying to put on the TV, it doesn't happen. It doesn't turn on. What could be the reason? That's the idea. The models are to give reasons. 
okay? Given reasons, we use might, may, could, must, should. The ones that are 100% are must and couldn't, okay? Must is 100% yes, um, and couldn't is 100% no. Then we have the possibilities. The possibilities are may, might, okay? Those are when we're, it's possible, but we don't know. Then we have an option. An option are, you have different situations. This one is could, okay? Could, those are for the options. I could go to the movies, I could visit my mother. I only have one hour, but these are my two options for that hour, okay? And finally, we have the personal recommendations or opinion. This is the should, is what I think is the best option. This is my recommendation to you. Oh, you should have sushi. You should try uh, olocuiltas pupusas, okay? I, this is my opinion, that's should. Could is in the same sentence, is not my recommendation, is an, like, a, like a menu, is one possibility, okay? Mm -hmm. Must is like, it's a necessity, like you have to. For all of these models, you can use, our models, you can use in the present, past or future. Today, we are focusing on the past. In the past, because we use the word have, so you have to say, he might have, or I should have, or I could have, or whatever. But it, it has to include have. And then next to have is the past participle. So it's not, I might have uh, ate, or I might have eat. No, it's I might have eaten. It's not I might have go, or uh, went. It's I might have gone, is the past participles. Okay. I have a question, teacher. Yes, Ernesto. Uh, I'm going to do an example. Uh, in my case, I would like to say to a pilot uh, this. You must have departed from the another airdrome earlier. Uh, pero podría decir, uh, my recommendation is that you should have departed from the uh, another Airdrum earlier. Eh, ¿Es correcto las dos formas o estoy mal? No, no, all of them are correct. You can change for should, you might have, you could have, because these are only different degrees. The grammar is the same. Only that first word give you is how much you mean it. Must have is like an order, obligation. Should is like an opinion, the recommendation. Could have is a possibility. It was an option, maybe not anymore. Okay? And then the may and, and might are the possibilities. And I can say, for example, if someone is asking me a number, but he had, ¿cómo puedo decir? Él tuvo que haber llamado. He, he, may, had, he, might, he yeah. had to he have had called. It. He had to have called. Mm -hmm. another person or another department so cool. i can tell him you might uh, have called to the flyland office no. but uh, no no because you might have is maybe you did this but this is not mm. what you want to say you don't want to say maybe you called you want to give your opinion so for your opinion uh, is you should have called the flight office you should have. uh huh because it's your opinion. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. When you use might or may, it means that you think that this is what they did, but you don't know. Mm. All right. Okay. So yeah. yes, all of them are correct. Only is change how, if it's opinion, if it's possibility, if it's obligation, like this. This is the, the big difference for each of them. Okay. So what we have to do is uh, like create a situation or, or give a situation. Uh, it doesn't matter the tense. We can mm -hmm. use any tense. I'll, I'll give you an example. All right. 
Uh, Ernesto, do you see Celia? Yeah. Okay, she didn't take a shower today. Celia, <laughs> Celia didn't take a shower today. Why? Why, Celia? No, no, I'm asking you, Ernesto. You'll have why? to give the reason why. Uh, why? Uh, yes, why? Uh, she may have haven't gone to work. Okay, good idea. Only incorrect, the structure. Is she may or she might not? You're going to use the word not. Ah, she, she may or sure. might not, and then the rest was correct. Have gone to work today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's another reason? Go ahead, and so give me another, another thing. Mm -hmm. Quiero ver. Uh, she couldn't have uh, he couldn't took or taken a shower because there was no falling water. <laughs> Correct. She couldn't have. That's that's one hundred percent not possible. Why? Because there was no water. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to do. So any okay. situations, but just try them. Even though maybe you only have time for one because it's almost time to finish. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you're gonna try. Arm the the car alarm care can is, can uh, be activated once you close the door of your car. So you forgot those tiny things. Yeah, and I think And because of those things you get involved in, in a big uh, other situation. Okay. Um Okay, I see we have more, most people back. Let's just review this to make sure that it's clear for everyone. So I know we still have, oh, we're still missing a group, I think. Hang on, there they are, okay. <laughs> I was thinking, hey, we're missing. Okay, there's the last group. Um, what is the main idea? The main idea is that these are all for giving the the level of certainty, how secure you feel, or how do you feel it happened? Do you feel 100% secure? Do you feel like 80%? Do you feel 50%? Do you feel 20? All of these are not an exact number. It's for an idea, okay? Now, you can use them in present, past, and future, and they are correct. That's why you have to be careful when you use them, because they are correct in all of the forms, and they are correct in every sentence. I can say, she. I, I can say, for example, for um, for Heidi, Heidi must have eaten pupusas, or I could say Heidi might have eaten pupusas, or Heidi could have eaten pupusas, or Heidi should have eaten pupusas. And all of the sentences are correct grammatically, one hundred percent correct. The problem is not the grammar. The problem is what I want to communicate to the person. This is where I have to be careful. Right? Okay. Okay. So we're going to pause right there. Tomorrow we're going to continue. We're going to review again the models. We're going to practice again the models in the past tense. And then we're going to advance. I recommend you to try to keep up with the lessons because if you are, if we are already doing something like this and you are looking at unit one or lesson two, it's going to be more difficult for you to reinforce and to maintain the same level. So try not to fall too far behind, okay? If you have a chance, look okay. at the video and you'll get a better ideas. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for the advice. Thank you guys, have a great night. Thank you, thank you. Bye bye. Take care guys, see ya. Thank you.